First of all, congratulations on the new album, Deadlock. Thank, Thank you. you very much. No problem. Um, what can you tell me about the title of this album? So a title, um, well, I mean, it's the first time we've used the title track as well for us, which is uh, something quite special, I guess. Um, but, you know, Deadlock, I think, you know, when we've been stuck in a lockdown for two years and the biggest part of our identities, which is playing in a band's been taken away, it kind of feels like you're just stuck and you're going nowhere. And, uh, you know, we were trying to figure out, like, what was, it was because it was quite, we, the, the title for the track and the uh, record didn't come till after the song was completed. Mm. Yeah, I think we had most of the album completed and we were trying to name that track. And, um, you know, we kind of looked through the lyrics of a lot of the album and noticed that a lot of the stuff was like a reoccurring factor. And, um, you know, we, we, it was that hitting that ceiling. I think once the idea of Deadlock came around for the song name, it just suddenly encompassed everything on the album, all this like self-doubt. Mm. Um, you know, just trying to kind of figure out your own worth and like where you fit into the world outside of just being a musician. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it was definitely a kind of cool thing for us. It's captured how we were all feeling within the last two years and put it in this like box and, you know, means that we've kind of been able to let it all go and just, uh, you know, hopefully move forward. Cool. Cool. And uh, what makes it a different album from Between You and Me? Oh. I feel like this is this is just this is us now. We're like it's matured. Between You and Me, we're still it's still good. We're still very happy with it. But this is and this this album is a lot more based on the riff as well. So uh, musically, it's uh, wanted it to be as interesting as we could get it, and also lyrically have it a bit more emotive something that the listener could attach to in their own way and uh, latch on to the the emotional side of it all it's just a very personal album that we just wanted to make every single aspect as interesting as we could yeah it's definitely uh you know we've we changed a lot of people over the last couple of years and you know the bit of time and covid's kind of given us an opportunity to reinvent the band you know this is envisions 2.0 this is not where we were this is where we want to be i think that was like quite a bit of a blessing for us really Mm. yeah i think lyrically that was definitely one of the huge things we you know when we sat down to start writing lyrics for this album it wasn't like okay this album's gonna be about this or this album's about that we kind of had to jump over a lot of hurdles to figure out what we even wanted it to be about and then it wasn't until we kind of stopped overthinking everything and was just honest like Mm. with how we were kind of feeling and experiencing in that moment um you know, that was kind of when we kind of captured something and it felt just like, oh, okay, this is right. This is where we should be going. I think it's the first time we've been a bit more like probably vulnerable on a record. Um, you know, there's no puffed out chest or anything here. It's, you know, kind of laying it all bare and just being like, this is what's going on with us. And, mm. you know, with this, it's, I think it's the first time we've had a lot more people on like a larger scale being like, you know, I really feel these songs. They really mean something to me. They're taking, you know, what we've kind of put not necessarily it has to be the same thing as like the narrative we've written them against, but everyone's found some solace in these songs in their own way, which is super cool. Something probably quite new for us as well. <laughs> it's that's something I really find quite interesting. Like obviously writing these lyrics, we know our purpose behind them, but seeing people write their own story behind what's written is a, uh, is really, really cool and interesting. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, like you say, you've been kind of, reinventing for lack of a better word the the band since between you and me how did that manifest itself this time when recording the album was this a did you do anything different or was this a case of you all had to do things individually because of lockdown and so on and so forth um we normally do things quite individually anyway don't we like we're quite a remote working band anyway um you know, it was the first time we've like produced the record ourselves. So, you know, I recorded all the music, um, did the editing, the post-production. And the only part that was recorded elsewhere was Ben still went and recorded the vocals with Sam Graves, who we've recorded previously with. Um, just because the whole working relationship with him is so good and vocals to actually capture that moment, you really need someone that you're good at working just, with. Um knows us all like personally as well but he's he's very good with grasping somebody's vision and he's really like understanding and knowing 
you can literally, like, I remember years ago, someone was doing a drum fill with the mouth and he knew exactly what it was and he knew what they meant. So he just, he just knows what people's visions are. He can grasp it and he knows how it needs to be portrayed. So, he, and obviously he's like one of my closest friends. So the working relationship spot on and uh, that's never usually a good thing. So if I'm being shit, he'll tell me. Yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, it works in your favour because you don't, you know, particularly with vocals, when you're stood in the room, you're like so isolated and exposed. You know, it's in a vocal, you know, if it's a bad vocal, it can feel like it's directly reflecting on you because it's not like, oh, you're playing the guitar and the guitar sounds shit. You're like, so to have that person you can work with who there's no hard feelings and you can just work together to get the best thing, best take, sorry. Um, I think that definitely happened with this album. You know, did a lot more stuff you know, on our own, but by recording it on our own and not having like a slot of, you know, three months in the studio or two months in the studio to complete the songs that were pre-written, mm. we had so much time to basically be like, no, that's not good enough. We're not going to accept that. We're not going to put a filler track on. We're not going to do this. Like, there was no rules. There was no time limits. You know, it gave us the opportunity to effectively write our first album again because at that point there was no pressure to be, you know, it has to be done by this point and you're playing shows and trying to fit it in around it, which was a bit of a blessing in disguise, to be fair. Yeah. Would you say that having that freedom and having all that time and if in, this is the most um, complete or uh, best summary of Envision so far? I'd say so, 100%. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a way more dynamic than anything we've ever done. Um yeah, there's definitely some really heavy songs on there, but I don't feel like, yeah, it's not just like a, I feel like the last record was definitely like we were playing shows live. So we were just writing breakdowns because we wanted to play them live. Whereas this time around, because we had a different kind of angle to write from, from being at home and writing for where we wanted to be once we got back out on the road, maybe some bigger stages playing to, you know, different, different environments in the room. Yeah. Yeah. It gave us a, a bit more of an opportunity, a bit more scope to, a bit more dynamic with it um i definitely think it's the, the best performance wise any of us has ever done you know everything's super hard <laughs> it's uh, it's really hard which is which is great you know like we go back to playing some of the old songs in practice now and it feels like playing a nursery rhyme it's so like simple that it feels like monotonous yeah. um whereas these new songs are so challenging that it's a competition with ourselves to be like trying to crush it and you know i think as a musician you're always chasing that you know dragon of trying to get that next step up and hopefully in six months times these songs are going to be easy for us and then it means the next record is going to be even harder so sweet um obviously like you say it's a very dynamic album that's reflected very well um with the videos you've released so far you've done one for the title track there's also a nihilist which is a fucking great title that's like Everyone out, out there will be like, fuck, should have named my band that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, DVPE, which I'm hoping I pronounced that right. I'm hoping it's not supposed to be dupe or something. Uh, it's dope. Dope. It's is it? DVPE, but it's dope. Yeah. It's just us being cool and changing an O for a V because our band's got a V in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's- so, so by releasing these these songs, were these all chosen specifically to represent the kind of vastness of the record, or were these just songs that you felt represented how you felt, or whatever near when you were asked to do a video? I think that we, these were chose because they represent the album, but they don't give too much away, mm. and it shows the variety. Because out of those three songs, not one of them's the same, or even like similar. And I feel like throughout the album. It is just like a mixture of it doesn't sound like the samey the whole way through. And they were the best ones that could have portrayed that, but without giving too much away. Hmm. I feel because the album's a bit of a journey as well. So, like, where those songs fall on the actual track list is quite like the middle round of like the journey. Whereas, like, I feel like if we'd released a track like Fall With Me at the, you know, the start, it wouldn't have made sense with the same way that it does when you listen to the record, because by the time you get to those later songs, you're so like emotionally attached to the album uh, that it has like a whole new weight to it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. So like, you know, it was 
like you said, it's the dynamic of it. You know, Annihilus was the, the chorus is like the catchiest thing we've ever like written. Mm. So it was definitely a, a obvious choice for us. We initially planned to release Deadlock first. That was going to be the first single we were going to release, but because of video video scheduling and stuff, it didn't kind of pan out that way. Mm. But in retrospect, I think that worked really, really well for us. I think the actual order that we ended up releasing them, yeah, you know, was super nice. We always wanted it to be like we're going to release this, we're going to release a nihilist. They're probably going to get people messaging us saying, "Oh, you know, they've sold out. They're writing, you know, poppy choruses." And then we release dope, and it's like that end breakdown will shatter anyone's face. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, having that kind of contrast was nice. Kind of hit every kind of field. Mm. Good, good, you know, and I, I think it's important for a band to display different um, aspects of themselves and to evolve. Because if an album was just breakdown, 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 nobody except the most ardent metalcore, deathcore fan wants to listen to that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's great live in it because you go to a show and as soon as a breakdown hits you, like it doesn't matter who the band is, you can get involved with it. Mm. But, you know, I think. For us, the biggest thing we realize is the songs we go back to on our old records, the ones that have a bit more of an emotional impact, the ones that are, for lack of a better phrase, just better songs, like technically better, you know, lasting songs. Hmm. So going into this record, we were like, you know, we don't want to have two or three of the songs that we're going to be playing, you know, two years down the line. We want to be playing every single song on this record, you know, for a long time. Yeah. And that definitely helped shape the album. Yeah, it's clearly an album that you're very proud of, and rightly so. You know. Thank you. Um, well, obviously the videos are very eye-catching. Something else eye-catching is the artwork. I really like the artwork, and that it's that kind of like lit sculpture sort of work, for lack of a better description yeah. of it. Um, how, how did this art come about? Was this something you found? Was it something you had commissioned? So we did the artwork with a, a graphic designer called Mate North, um, it's from the UK. We've worked with him on multiple kind of things now. Um, but we knew that like, we didn't want to have a person on the cover of the artwork because we'd done that previously like twice and we're like, it's starting to be like, oh, this is becoming a bit of a thing here. Yeah. Um, you know, we wanted to have, you know, an emblem or a symbol or something that was like, you know, it doesn't matter if you take it out of context, it doesn't look like that Alma work. If you see that shape now, you're going to associate it to that record. Mm. Um but then like the, obviously the title kind of came into play and we started thinking about how, you know, like optical illusions and Penrose, like triangles and uh, I can't remember what the exact phrase is, but there's a scene they're, in Inception. In, they're impossible triangles, aren't they? But yeah, well, it's, oh. it's a Penrose triangle, but there's a something, another thing for, um, I can't remember what the word is, but if you've seen Inception, when he walks up and down the stairs and he's showing in this dream world and like they go, a paradox and it goes up the stairs mm. and then oh, yeah, yeah, changes yeah. the angle of it and it's like oh the stair doesn't actually complete that was where that kind of came from We're like that's how deadlock feels it feels like no matter where you go you know you're always going back around in a circle and the mm. more you look at this like emblem you know it's, it's super trippy it's confusing as hell and like you think that you're going to find a way like oh where it's going to be incorrect but it's you know always brings you back around so yeah props to Props to Daniel for designing that. It's super, super cool. Yeah, it is. Really nice. Um, we've mentioned uh, briefly uh, Metalcore. Obviously, Envisions is quite a, um, I guess, proud Metalcore band. It's there on the all the pages and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you see Metalcore in the current age? Because I'm old enough to remember when it exploded in the 2000s and it was everywhere. And it kind of not faded away but it got quieter for a little bit and now there seems to be all kinds of metalcore and deathcore bands coming back or well, coming back young bands coming up and yeah, yeah. so where do you see it in the current uh climate of metal music see i'm really bad with like sub genres and stuff because i just class it all as metal hmm. <laughs> because you, you can go on about sub genres for ages couldn't you so like metalcore is massive but it's all just metal at the end of the day it's just there's just so many different styles of it and I think where it's at now, I think it is growing popular and more popular, which is obviously a good thing for us. Mm, but um, you got like, what, what What do you class Bring Me as now? Yeah, they're I don't know, because I don't like them so. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, they're like, so it's like, you, 
from what you are, you'll probably change into something else, and then you flip into another subgenre and then whatever. It's just so confusing. Mm. It's a bit more fluid, isn't it? Which is quite cool, yeah. I think. Because everything's been pigeonholed so tightly, you know, people are seen as like genre breaking or groundbreaking. But realistically, like Ben said, it's all just metal. Like people mm. from all different sorts of, you know, metal and pop music, you know, and hip hop. It's like mm. so many different influences there. And I think the idea of necessarily being so, you know, having to just like one type of music's not really as bad. Like when, when we were like younger and at school, it's like, if you didn't like that one type of music, it's like, ah, oh, that was wrong. Whereas now it's, I think it's a bit more like the metal scene's a bit more unified as a community, yeah. which is cool. Um, but I, I tell totally you, I know what you mean about like 2000s metalcore. Like that was something again with this album, you know, we still listen to the same albums from probably, well, I would say 2000s, but probably from like, you know, 2010 or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, those are the albums that we still got back to in you know, bands like Killswitch and Bullet, um, like Aston Alexandria's first record. Yeah. And I think that was something that influenced us well with this. We like, yeah, we get quite a few people like, oh, you know, but it's, um, you know, it's like quite dated and they're not keeping up with the metalcore genre. It's like, we're not trying to. We're just trying yeah. to play the things that we like listening to. We still like listening to those albums. You know, that's yeah. kind of what's going to happen. No, that's a very uh, interesting way of looking at it, I guess. That's it. Uh, well, just finally then, um, I know you've got a couple of shows coming up soon, one in Leeds and one in London. Um, I yeah. live in Huddersfield, so I'm going to try and get to the Leeds one. Oh, yeah. Nice one, dude. Yeah. Um, what other plans have you got coming forward? Is there any more live shows down the pipeline or any more like videos or anything for this album? That's a bit we of both, I reckon. To, like, we've said for this one, like we want to get it out as much as we can so we just want to be hitting the road as much as possible and hit new places where possible go back to places we've been to um in terms of videos uh i don't know we haven't really spoke about that yet um, definitely will do some but it's just yeah. figuring out when and why like not when and why but like you know when and what because mm. you know you've obviously we've put a lot into the the campaign before this record more than we've ever done before so like now we need to kind of take stock and see how the album you know is received and what songs people are actually liking because uh, you know between us and the band do we all have favorite different favorite songs every week well apart from ben and um you know so it's um yeah it definitely definitely more shows hopefully as the world's opening up a bit more we should be able to you know, get back out to you know some european countries as well yeah and yet plenty more touring nice one nice one well, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me this evening. I do appreciate it. And Thanks wish you only mate. the best with this album and the shows coming up and hopefully more shows coming up. And hopefully oh, more European sure, fans mate. can get to see you as, as well. 